Hello again. Welcome in to Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network, where we go into the garage area and talk to the folks that make these race cars go around the racetrack. So glad you've joined us. Steve Post here, pit road reporter for MRN. Todd Gordon, 25-time winning crew chief and championship winning crew chief joins me. Hello, Todd. How are you? I'm doing great. Man, I'm telling you what, North Wilkesboro was wild. Yeah. Absolutely wild. Bonkers. Kudos to everybody up there. Atmosphere was great. Fun, fun time. Fun, I, fun weekend. I was there last August for the Cars Tour race. Yeah. That place was in shambles. No doubt. They nah, did it. They did it. They, they did, did it. it. They I did mean, it. it. It's just incredible to see what they were able to do with this thing. Uh, a good night of racing. Uh, wasn't spectacular. Wasn't a banging doors coming to checker. Yeah. But you know what? They had that. So, Kyle Larson did a really good job. Sometimes somebody gets hooked up yeah. and stinks up a show, and I think that's what we saw. Yeah, we saw we saw cars. I mean, it was interesting to see that lap 18 call. I mean, yeah. the top three finishers all pitted at lap 18. Yeah. And I think part of that is they got another chance to swing at the race car. Right. And yeah. everybody else only had one. So they at least made a change, and they could know, wow, that was only 50% of So that of when they needed. got to 100, they, they could make they a second a better, change. Yes. So they were a change ahead, yeah, if you think of that. They were ahead of everybody. Yeah, we, we always talk about that as far as tires. You're down a tire set. Well, tires weren't a factor at all. You were up an adjustment. Yes. Now, if a caution happens at 40, 50, 60, they're buried. Right. But exactly. it didn't. It didn't. It, yeah, didn't. it worked out great for him. So Kyle Larson, Cliff Daniels, dominant performance. Um, Billy Scott with Bubba Wallace, 12th at Dover, 4th at Kansas. Booty fifth, Barker. Or, or Booty Barker. Yeah, Booty Barker. Yes. Okay. I wrote, I wrote down the wrong <laughs> name. Booty Barker, 12th at Dover. Fourth at Kansas, fifth at Darlington, second at North Wilkesboro. Booty and Bubba have this thing rolling. Yeah, yeah. Everybody wants to talk about. This. I, I did this on Inside the Race this week, so I'm gonna I'm gonna steal okay. a little bit of it. But everybody wants to talk about Chase Elliott making the playoffs. Yeah, Bubba Wallace has made more points in the last three races than Chase Elliott has. Wow, ten more. Ten more points. Wow. Yeah, because he was the he was a cutoff car, yeah, and, and he really still is. He's, yeah. Well, you keep doing what they're doing. They're the, going to make it tough on points. Yeah. Or they're going to win a race. Yeah. And, then and put they're, they're in that position. They're in that position. They're doing a great job. They've turned this around. It's funny because about huh. a month, six weeks ago, Bubba was talking about he just wasn't. We need capable. to change the driver. Yeah. We need to change yeah. the driver out. And and he wears and his emotions he, in his sleeves. He sleep. does exactly. And and Denny had talked about that in the in the thing. And I've talked to Booty about that as you know, Bubba coming out of the care center and said we need to change the driver by Tuesday. He's ready to go whoop the word's tail. So, I mean, but it just is. It's fa It's been a fascinating ride for those guys. Yes, definitely has. And somebody else who's kind of turned their season back around? Oh. Denny Hamlin. Yeah. Talked about getting hot and yep. fourth in points. Yep, absolutely. So, that is who we're talking about. We're going to talk to his crew chief. Chris Gabehart is our guest this week here on Crew Call. So, let's do this. Let's step away and come back. Chris Gabehart from Joe Gibbs Racing. He joins us. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Uh, Network. Let's get to it. Let's get over to Joe Gibbs Racing. And joining us over there is Crew Chief for Denny Hamlin on the FedEx Toyota, Chris Gabehart. Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm great this morning. How are you guys doing? We are fantastic, that's for sure. North Wilkesboro, kind of your assessment. I'll just open-ended question. <laughs> you go where you want to go with it. Your assessment on what we had this weekend for the All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro. Yeah, I thought the the weekend itself was fantastic, but really the cool thing about uh, last week, in my opinion, was the week was fantastic. I, I was out there Tuesday for the late model festivities, and and it got dampened by rain that evening, but, uh, you know, it was packed infield, a lot of people in the grandstands. I didn't get to make it back Wednesday, but similar thing, and then I was there Friday, Saturday, Sunday for all the NASCAR festivities, and I mean, even for the pit crew challenge, I think it was 50% full. So ton of support great atmosphere um just lots of uh, excitement appreciation it seemed uh to be back at such a historic venue and and really i thought it delivered in every every way yeah if you look at and you go back to uh you go back to saturday and the uh, the qualifying races and um wet weather tires kind of brought a new facet into it i thought it was kind of cool and saw some wear saw some challenges it was i thought a, a successful opportunity to, to, to Put the cup cars on us. Man, yeah, you couldn't have come up with a more perfect scenario. Um, understandably, it, we're all a little bit timid about doing it. We've never done it. Um, so, you know, how wet should it be? When should you start the race? When do you move to slicks? How is it going to perform? All, all of those things. Do you need the wipers? Do you need the light package? We don't know. I mean, we just haven't done this, right? So, 
you know, with that uh, setting, uh, the All Star, where they're they're not paying any points, it's just a heat race. Um, it's at a historic venue, uh, open opening it back up to the public for the first time. We know how the Smith family likes to roll; they like to do things big. So I'm sure they embrace the opportunity to to be a part of that. And I thought it turned out great. Uh, and and on top of that, I, I think the industry learned learned a lot there uh, about maybe how aggressive we can get moving forward with some things. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was it was an interesting dynamic watching that play out. I, I actually want to go back. Um, you mentioned the pit crew challenge. As far as that goes, um, and 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 a Joe Gibbs team uh, won. A, you, you know, Chris Chris Gale's team over there with 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 Ty won the overall thing, uh, the mm-hmm. overall contest. Even though they were an open car, uh, what an event that was! I, I'm I'm sure your guys really enjoyed being part of that as well. Uh, they definitely did. I, I hats off to the fifty four group. I know I know a lot of those guys, really good guys, hard workers. Um, and, and you know, uh, it, being a part of the event, sometimes it's hard for me to objectively assess the interest or or yeah. you know how well it went over in the media or on TV or was it exciting that kind of thing. But I can tell you that the participants really really enjoyed it. I thought it was a perfect way to put the spotlight back on the pit crews, but the drivers are still involved and. I felt like it was entertaining. Uh, I thought it was a, a great mix of, of, you know, competition versus show, so to speak. And uh, hopefully, hopefully something like that continues to carry on. I thought it was well done. Yeah, well done for an all-star event, a chance to bring all the, all the players into the game and, and, and make something happen. I, I thought it was really cool. And you talked about the drivers having to be involved. I, I thought Ross Chastain had a shot, and the one car had a shot at beating the 54. And I felt like Ross dropped the ball when he went to leave the box. So yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, it's just just as you said, everybody, even the all the stars, got to play in that one. I thought it was a good deal. Um, been a lot of talk, and and I've got my opinions on it. I, um, the the surface there, it's old, it's wore out, but we patched it in enough places that you kind of had grip strips on both ends. Um, what's your takeaway on the surface and, and thoughts going forward? If we if we end up going back to there for another all star race or or anything else. I love the nostalgia of the surface, but there's obviously a lot of risk involved um, where it comes to scheduling and, and, you know, if you get rain or the track starts to come apart, how well is it going to handle all that? Can the show move on properly? My personal opinion is, you know, they've invested a ton of time and effort and money into that place. They've turned it into an excellent venue. And while we hate the word repave, I think they do need to look at repaving it. Um, however, uh, I think just like technology evolves in everything, I think technology needs to evolve in how we repave these surfaces. And I know they don't do them all the same way, but I think North Wilkesboro's a perfect opportunity to look at some, I guess I'll call it lower grade aggregate, um, stuff that can deteriorate quicker. Uh, maybe even look at mixing the lanes up. Maybe this lane needs this type of aggregate and that lane needs that type of aggregate progressive banking perhaps a little bit not a lot um but i think you know surely gosh we've gotten a lot smarter about how we build racetracks since the last time they paved north wilkes yes, so i really think we need to infuse some of that technology yeah i like i i really do i hadn't thought about different aggregates i've thought about the, the 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 banking but i hadn't thought about the different aggregates that's for sure but it is it is it is amazing and uh by the way todd todd left it open-ended there but he he said they need to repave it he was I, uh, he was in the repave I, camp I, ha- I had to sit down to say it because i love all the old wore out racetracks you know california atlanta in the old days kansas homestead places tire fall off that brings our game back into into play right we get to strategize our way forward but to your point, uh, you know, this one's old and there comes a point when everything's at its due. Yeah, Chris, we can do it, though. As an industry, we can do it. Look uh, how many things that we've done over just the last three years. <laughs> uh, we can do it. We can figure out how to repave these racetracks and get what it is that we're looking for without all the baggage of the track coming apart and yeah. and, and those types of things. Yeah. And, and Marcus Smith talked about that. He does want to if he does repave it afterwards, he said, uh, don't I, I don't want to just do it like a parking lot. You know, we'll, we'll take into I think you're. I love the aggregate thought. I hadn't thought that way. I did think progressive banking and try to get the, the groove moved off the bottom so there's opportunities. It'd be, it'd be cool to see what they can do and, and how it works forward. Um, as we talk forward, we're going back to Charlotte, Coke 600. You won there last year. Um, or, I mean, I, I rewatched to see where it was. Four tire call at the end, put yourself in position and uh, missed the chaos of, of that last one, took advantage of it. You guys were really good. 
you got to feel confident with with the momentum you've built coming into the 600 and, and and your opportunities coming there yeah for sure that was such a huge win for our team uh the last kind of crown jewel for for denny left to win that's still on the circuit uh just a really really big win uh huge to win at home as you know todd and and that one's a that was a big one and the way we did it uh you know we sat on the pole for that race got the number one pit stall had some adversities on the pit crew side of things uh because i was actually out for a suspension and so was two of my guys and that number one pit stall proved to be huge uh kept us in the game all night long and then and then a strategy call there at the end and denny did his job it really kind of mixed everything together and made for a really special win Chris, it is the 600, and and I, and I think at one time, 10 or 15 years ago, it seemed like every week we were running 500-mile races. Mm-hmm. And so the 600, I think, kind of lost its endurance factor, and equipment obviously got better, okay? Uh, we seem to be more 400-mile races, shorter races. Is there an endurance element of this thing now, whether it's equipment or whether it's dr- driver, whether it's strategy, is there an endurance element to Sunday night? Yeah, I loved how I loved how we moved from from North Wilkesboro and the nostalgia and repave to this. I think the Coca Cola Six Hundred should be six hundred miles forever and ever. Amen. Just like the Daytona Five Hundred should be five hundred miles forever and ever. Amen. Because yes, uh, there is an endurance element, and I do think that our sport got a little bit five hundred mile happy. Uh, don't get me wrong. So I think as we move away from five hundred miles being the norm, the Six Hundred will start to have um its element of uniqueness shine on it even more and i thought last year was a fantastic race i mean you saw endurance issues you saw cars that were hard to drive saw great racing i think there were zero green flag pit stops i mean think about that you know 600 miles and i don't think there were any green flag pit stops and the racing was exciting so it's supposed to be hard the cars aren't supposed to last forever the drivers drivers were supposed to make mistakes and uh, I thought last year's race showcased that really well. Yeah, there's. I, I was looking back through it because I'm having to prefer the, for this one as well. I think the longest oh, green right. flag <laughs> run was 47 laps last year. I'm sure because I said that we'll have two green flag stops now. Um, <laughs> but you look at this Coke 600, a couple of things. I, I, I love it. I, I agree with you. There's, there's stipends, right? The Southern 500 is that one. And, and this is the, the Coke 600 is, is, is got to stay here. But going to Charlotte, the stages, you've got an extra stage involved. You got transition from starting at six o'clock day to night on a racetrack that I feel like's pretty temperature and sunlight sensitive, and it's a home race. How do you handle that, and what challenges are there to those three pieces? Yeah, that's a big one. I, I don't, I don't know that there's any other track on our on our circuit that changes more uh, than Charlotte Motor Speedway from day to night, as you know. Um, and, and you know, you mentioned the home race aspect of it. What a great part of our schedule here where we race Darlington, North Wilkesboro, and now Charlotte, uh, all the race, all close by. We all drive to and from the track every week. So it definitely has that home race feel aspect to it, which you know allows some of the shop, shop people to come and, and be a part of it. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just a really, really neat race. And, and I think it's last year uh, really revitalized it in a lot of ways. Now, I think, listen, all these teams are smarter. We, we've learned the cars better. Um, the drivers are making less mistakes uh, because of it and their familiarity with driving the car. So I think you will see uh, some green flag pit stops this time around um, as, as we've learned to refine our craft. But it's still uh, going to be anybody's race, and there's going to be a lot of hurdles to jump between here and the checkered flag, that's for sure. No doubt. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. It is it, it is fun, that's for sure. Um, great, great stuff. Coca-Cola 600. Chris, I, I kind of want to take a look also at your season that you've had to date and, and go back to Kansas with that win. Um, you guys, such good speed, such good performance, uh, a bugaboo here, a bugaboo there. Uh, what was the relief factor? What was the closing it out factor? What was the what was the what was the sense when you guys finally got that got that win checked off? Yeah, uh, Kansas was was a really good uh, win for us, really big morale boost because, you know, our team for really the last year and a third, we'll call it the next gen era, have actually had the speed um, and, and the race craft to race for a lot more wins than we've actually gotten. And as Todd knows, that can be really frustrating when you when you deserve an opportunity to race for the win, uh, not necessarily win a race, but race for the win. But execution wise you don't get it to that point it can be frustrating and be hard on the team and we've had our fair share of that lately so 
the last 20 laps of Kansas, I honestly sat back in my chair and relaxed as a race fan because I knew we had done our part <laughs> yeah. to get to the end of the race for an opportunity to race for the win. And I didn't know how it was going to shake out, but that was that was a relief to, to finally get to do that and enjoy the fruits of your labor. And then, man, did we have a heck of a show at the end there between those two guys. And fortunately, we came out on top. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to I want to go back because I looked at that one. I think your pit stop times by by what we look at 10, 10 0 to 10 5 all day long every stop seem like you just put the day together and it's as you talked about the struggles through the last year year and a little bit of of pit road and I won't say I'm going to say pit road because there's speeding penalties there's issues there's there's many facets to hit that how do you lead your group through that to get to the other side because it, it looks like you've made it that way and and you're getting there. Well, I do think we're coming out of the hole. I won't say we're out of it by mm -hmm. any stretch. Uh, I think we got behind uh, as a as a team, as an organization, and and you know as well as I do when when you get behind in in the world's best of anything <laughs> against the world's best competitors of anything, yeah. it's going to be hard to make that up because they're improving each and every day as well. Uh, but I do think we've turned the corner. Our group's a great group of guys, specifically to the eleven car really excited to be working with all of them they're that they work hard and you know dover the the week before kansas was one where we really had a great shot to win but had a bad day on pit road and didn't get a chance to race for the win um it was very evident they knew it they come home worked hard all week and to go reward them with the type of performance that they had at kansas reward them with a win was really special for the entire team and and showed them that we can do it and um they're as motivated as ever to keep succeeding. Uh, it was really, really, really impressive. That's for sure. Fun, fun stuff. As we then, we roll out of Charlotte, we get into the summer months. We get into the airplane portion of the season again, <laughs> yeah. where we stop driving to these racetracks. Just kind of kind of assess, you know, what your thoughts are when we get into June and July and the summer months and how you feel going into, going into these gateways and Sonomas and Nashvilles and places like that. Well, I, I do think we're still in a spot as an 11 team where when we execute uh, at the level that we're capable of, we're capable of winning every week, any track that we go to, with the exception of the road courses. We, we have some work to do there. We know it. Um, fortunately, Tyler, Tyler Reddick ran really well at COTA. So uh, as Todd knows, anytime you get a bogey within the camp that you mm -hmm. can kind of study how they do business and try to improve, it really helps rise uh, rising tide raises all ships, so to speak. Right. So we're looking forward to the road course program and trying to approve upon it. But when you, when you talk about oval races and, and all these tracks that we have coming up, it's exciting for us every week. Cause we really do feel like we have a, a chance to go compete for wins. And, and that's all you can ask for is a chance. Uh, I think there's uh, a lot of teams and people out there who aren't as fortunate. Um, I don't take that lightly. Um, I know how lucky we are to be in that boat and, it's something I enjoy to do every each and every week because of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of those things. As you look at the schedule, we've got what thirteen races left. We're at the halfway point, but of the thirteen that are left, there's no playoff race tracks left. You know, so everything wow. you're looking to is is its own kind of creature, and and some of yep. them very much different. How do you use that preparing yourself for the playoffs? Is it just about execution? Is it about cleaning those things up? Is it are the things you learn out of those tracks? Are there tracks you look to? I, I know you brought up the road course stuff and there is the roval in, in the playoffs, but are there tracks you look to within the next, you know, re the rest of the regular season to kind of key yourself into something playoff driven? It's almost like Todd's done this before. Yeah. You, you hit on a great point. <laughs> uh, the next 13 races, while none of them um, are, are playoff tracks and they really aren't even playoff environments, right? You yep. go into the dog days of summer where it's really hot and, yeah. You know, it's it's struggle to get a grip on these racetracks, and they aren't even the ones that are in the playoff. There are things you learn. You always learn from a mechanical aspect and, and how do I make our cars better, of course. But really, it's more about the execution side. It's more about the momentum and the cadence of calling races and working through a week and, and, and performing uh, at a higher level, uh, rounding off all the edges, so to speak, um, so your team is ready to go come the playoffs. And that's what these next 13 races are about. It's, it's not about the racetrack and the setups. It's more about hitting your stride and being ready for that final 10. And, and, and then one other thing I want to touch on, and this goes back, uh, I look back at it, uh, came out of Bristol Dirt, you were 12th in points. And it's about that time Denny said, look for us, we're going we're gonna to turn it on. And, and since that, you're now fourth in points. It seems like 
not that you haven't had the speed right along, but there, that he almost like spurred. It, and maybe he just said it because he saw it coming in you guys. But you've had good runs, you've had gr- good point stays, you've put races together, you've marched your way forward, twelfth yep. to fourth, and and a quarter of the season is is an accomplishment to be proud of. Yeah, and while there have been a, been a lot of these floating around, we've obviously had a twenty five point penalty. Uh, the owners' points were actually second in points, so. You know, yeah, point. we. This was a stretch where we knew that we were. You know, all these racetracks are really, really good for us. And to your point, we've been running well. Uh, it's just late race, last run stuff that doesn't go right. We we keep track of of lots of metrics, like all teams do. And and I'm I'm very fond of the numbers myself. And mm-hmm. we've given up 35 to 40 points in the last 20 laps of of races this year. Um, and, and Phoenix is the most notable one, obviously, where we restart inside the top 10 and finish last car in the lead lap. So, uh, but there's been a lot of instances like that. So what you got to do as a race team is look past the points at times and say to yourself, how are we really running? How are we performing? Um, rather than get caught up on the numbers and the results themselves, because while they don't draw pictures on store card, scorecards, they only, they only write numbers. The results are the only thing that matters. That's not always how you measure your race team. Sometimes you got to look deeper. Chris, final question for you. You have such a passion for short track racing. I love, uh, I, I love that passion. Uh, mine's probably a little bit more dirt track racing. You're the super late model world on the asphalt side. I, I've been kind of in my mind. I sit back and I'm watching this on flow racing or dirt vision. For you, it's Racing America. This we live in a fascinating time where we used to have to read Speed Sport News on Thursday or Friday to get results from these races. This has got to be for a guy that's stepped away from super late model racing. Racing America and these sites have got to just be really neat for you to to continue your passion on the short track side. For sure, it, it's um, we really are going through a bit of a renaissance as a sport, certainly at the grassroots level when you think about all the opportunities that are in front of us uh, and and we're currently learning how to work through uh, to get in front of new eyeballs, right? And to to market the talents of these young short track racers in a way that we weren't able to before. Um, It still feels very very organic. Uh, I don't want to say unorganized, but trying to figure out how to consolidate the resources, certainly on on the super late model side that I at least know more about and develop, you know, some touring series. There's a few team, there's a few series out there that are trying to make themselves more notable from a regional and national level and are, and are having some luck doing it. But, but certainly it's the opportunities that, that flow uh, racing and, and racing America and just the accessibility of social media, all those things. I think our future is bright. And then you look at what North Wilkesboro did. You look at what Market Smith and his team did. And what a great atmosphere that created for the entire week for all of racing. Yep. Um, what a fantastic blueprint, right? I really think we can take that blueprint to multiple different markets around this country and inject that same style uh, of, of go to a, a key racetrack, a key partner of, of uh, NASCARs and rebuild the short track, right? And then bring the big guys in for a few years and let all the local uh teams and fans feed off of that and 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 help inject into their their economy invest into the future of that particular racetrack bring a lot of hype to it and then take the show on the road go to the next short track and rebuild it and revitalize it i think i think it's a fantastic way to invest in the future of our sport and it's really starting to show some potential dividends here, here, man. That sounds really, really good. And uh, that short track world is on display this week. Um, Hickory has the ASA tour on Thursday night. So if you're watching this, you're coming into Charlotte early, make sure you get up to Hickory Motor Speedway. Uh, Super late model racing is so good up there. I'm actually, the dirt late models are down at Cherokee Speedway okay. on Thursday night as well. So a couple good options to support the routes for sure. Chris, always enjoy the time. Always appreciate the conversation. Thanks for joining us and continued success as you roll along up there at, uh, at the 11 camp. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I always enjoy it as well. There Thanks. we go. Chris Gabart joining us from over at Joe Gibbs Racing. Stay with us more in just a moment. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Um, Todd Gordon, Steve Post, and I, I just, Chris Gabart from so many levels, the cup side, the short track side, is just so well connected to every aspect of the sport. Really enjoy my conversations with yeah, him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's well interjected and 
you know, it's, he, he sees it all. I, I think a lot of, he's a lot deeper than a lot of people want to think that crew chiefs are and, uh, into what's going on with his race team, the 35 points, you know, in, yeah. in, in the last 20 laps. I mean, keeping track of that stuff, uh, he's doing a good job and, and, and he has right along his, he and Denny have been a great pairing and, um, you know, the win at Kansas. And uh, as I talked about, well, the fourth in the last quarter of the season, uh, and, and he corrected me <laughs> to second, right? In yeah, owner's points. In owner's points, yeah. Because part of that loss that he talked about in Phoenix was a 25-point penalty for the driver. For the so, driver, yep. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and connected to the racing world. Not just, I thought his, his view on the surfaces at North Wilkesboro, that's a little deeper than I thought. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I like that a lot. And, the, and the, how this revitalized short track racing in North Wilkesboro, how we can carry that other places. His, his, his ideas here, and, and, I, and I hope, and I, and I say this with all respect for Matt Weaver, who does a lot of great stuff for Racing America, and Matt's a great writer there. We've all talked about this. One of, one of, one of the, the concepts is, you know, do we take this all-star race in a year or two? I'm going to just grab South Boston, for instance. Mm -hmm. Do we take this all-star race to a South Boston, and then do we take it and, and, and invest in the infrastructure, bring that track? And, and South Boston's a weird one because South Boston's pretty good right now, state-of-the-art track. Yep. But then do we move to Berlin, Michigan, you know, but Jeff Striegel's place. Yep. And then do we move to Nashville to a, Fairgrounds? Uh, Nashville Fairgrounds. And I just think that that's it. And 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 again, Matt Weaver, if if, if I've stole some of your thunder, I'm, I I apologize. Although we're we're all we're all, we're all preaching about this because yes. I think that you could take this model. I am telling you, last year the Cars Tour race and Wednesday night, I was there Wednesday night. There was a whole bunch of people watching late model stock racing that maybe have never watched it in the past, and maybe will go to Florence Motor Speedway or Hickory yes. or one of these tracks when yes. they're racing there soon. And I think some of that is driven by the fact that we've we've taken cut back to North Wilkesboro. I also think some of that's driven by the fact that we have major players in the Cup no series that are invested into that, right? Yeah. You've got Dale Jr. pushing that program. You've got Jeff Burton, Kevin Harvick. There's four of them there, and I'm right. missing one. Uh, um, Justin Marks. Oh, okay, Justin. Yeah, yeah. That Missed one. him. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Justin, but uh, you, you've got you've got kind of this give back thought right. and the driving it. Chris is very supportive of it. You know, it's when you've got people that are in the mm. higher levels of cup racing, pushing the yeah. grassroots stuff, that's going to help it as well. Well, and I think you compare it to the dirt track side and we do so much with wing nation, what Kyle Larson has done. Mm -hmm. And when you yes. look 2020, he was, he was removed from NASCAR and what he did to the dirt track side comes back to NASCAR wins the championship and continues. Yeah. That win on Sunday was the fifth different kind of car he's won at since the middle of April. Yes. Dirt late model, dirt sprint car, and I'm talking big races, trucks, Xfinity, and Cup. I think I heard it had four wins last week. Four wins last week, yeah. I mean, just, you know, just unreal, but it's it, it's the Dale Juniors, and, and, and those are, uh, Josh Berry, what Josh yep. Berry has done for the yep. Roots has been phenomenal, but it's also the Chris Gabehearts of the world, yes. the, the ones that are sitting back and thinking, and hey, maybe this, hey, maybe that, hey, maybe a different aggregate, maybe this, that, I, I just think, I love, and that's why I always love, I always feel like when I get done with a good conversation with Chris, I've got more to think about than when I went into the conversation, and I, and I respect that and really like that. Truly so, truly so, and, and it'd be cool to see if, I mean, there is, there is a, 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 you could take this all-star race and start to make it rotate mm -hmm. and, and there's, could we go to Iowa? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. I mean, there's, there's just, how do we hit different places? And that's something I think that, yeah. you know, NASCAR, uh, this, this group that's leading NASCAR is progressive. <laughs> they're, yeah. This I mean, is not your father's NASCAR. Not, no, <laughs> we go they to, aren't stuck in anything. They, yeah. I mean, we went to Coliseum yeah. and put asphalt over it to go put a race yeah. on. It was pretty darn good. Jeez. Remember when we used to plan our lives with, no, that's Pocono weekend. No, yes. that's the second Michigan yeah. weekend. No, that's when we go to Dover the second time. Now, I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I love that we're looking at how we make the program better. Yeah. Every, every facet of it. And, and, you know, it's, and that's allowed people like Chris with different ideas to voice them. And, and I, there's ears listening. No doubt. There really, truly is. So, from the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway to the historic Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Coke 600, um, I am, I am, I, I, I did it. Two thumbs up when he talked about this should be a 600. I have, in, I have been, I have enjoyed the 600 and, and, and just can't wait to get out there. Going to be out there doing uh, PA all weekend long. So, going to be following along the action, doing really, really well. But MRN is going to be out there as well. And we do Friday night programming out there. Six o'clock Eastern time, the Arkham Menard Series General Tire 150. And at eight o'clock, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the NC Education Lottery 200. So, we're going to be out there and you're going to be out there with that. Uh, 
out. That upstart, that young Jimmy, that Johnson, uh, Gary Johnson's boy, Jimmy Johnson. You're going to be out there with Jimmy. How are things uh, looking for you guys as you get ready for for the next uh, next endeavor? We, we still got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we still got work to do, but uh, uh, getting ready for it as we record this. Uh, you know, I've got I've got. Fortunately, we don't have to really load up until Friday evening, so. We've got a few days left of work. Uh, Cars coming together. Uh, Body-wise is there. Setup-wise, we're working through it. Uh, Been to the simulator a couple weeks ago with Jimmy, and he he didn't hate it. So that's 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 the start. Uh, At Coda, he did. We thought it was wrong. It wasn't. It was bad. (laughs) Right. So we're we're at least level there. But uh, uh, you know, everybody at Legacy Motor Club is doing a great job of of getting us together. And 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 Robbie Fairweather, my car chief, he's he's got the blunt of it. He's done a great job with it. And uh. And I'll I'll head out of this one and head back up there and, and work on getting ready for the weekend. God, I love it. It is so, so cool. That is for sure. Really, really neat stuff. We talked about our Friday night on Motor Racing Network. Performance Racing Network has the call of the Xfinity Series, the Allsco Uniforms 300 on Saturday, and the Coca-Cola 600 on Sunday. It is going to be a great weekend. The historic Sunday of Labor Day weekend. Or Memorial Day weekend, yes. you know. Monaco. I mean, you, you start off with Monaco, you go to the Indy 500, and we put a big old bow around it with the Coca-Cola 600. What a day, what a weekend. Short tracks all across America are in mm-hmm. action. I've spent the last few years at Port Royal Speedway on this weekend. And uh, so so get out to a track. Saturday night, get out to a short track. Sunday, if you're a, if you're a person who wants to sit on the couch for 16 hours, man, I love that. Have at it. Enjoy the racing. It's a good weekend. Yeah, it's a wonderful, it's an awesome, awesome weekend of racing. And uh we we saw it in IndyCar and qualifying. Lots of drama yeah. there. So uh, look forward to what we can bring out this weekend. My gosh. Great, great stuff. That's for sure. And speaking of great stuff, it is always wonderful to catch up with Chris Gabehart. So we appreciate Chris for joining us. More important than all of that, though, we thank you for joining us here this week on MRN's Crew Call.